So over the last couple weeks, we've discussed some of the various droid vehicles utilized by the CIS. But there is one vehicle that played a very notable role within the Separatist military that we haven't discussed, because it technically is not a droid itself. So today I'm dedicating an entire video to the AAT, or the Armored Assault Tank. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So the AAT, or Armored Assault Tank, is actually one of the first vehicles utilized by a droid army that we see in Star Wars. It's utilized by the Trade Federation as a main battle tank during their invasion of Naboo. We see these used en masse during that battle, and they prove their reliability during the Battle of Naboo. And they proved it so well that by the time of the CIS, it was a mainstay vehicle not just for the Trade Federation, but for the CIS as a whole. So today let's talk about exactly how these vehicles are designed, exactly why I didn't discuss them in my droid vehicles video, and a little bit about their history and their use. So let's start with how they're designed and exactly why I didn't discuss them before. Unlike many of the other vehicles we talked about, like the Spider Droid or the Hellfire Droid, the Armored Assault Tank is not a droid. It is a vehicle with three pilots, a gunner, a commander, and a driver. These roles would often be filled by battle droids, but the tank itself is not a droid and requires a pilot. As such, an organic could hop into it like a clone trooper and utilize it like any other vehicle. Its primary weapon is the single heavy laser cannon mounted to its main turret, but it also sports a pair of repeating blaster cannons and light blaster cannons on each of its arms. On top of that, it had six chain-fed projectile launchers and could carry up to 12 missiles. This relatively varied, but ultimately fairly simple armament allowed it to be really effective in combat against most opponents. Now, it did have some blind spots. Near its aft, for example, it really couldn't shoot at anything that got too close. But against most other large vehicles, for example, it was actually pretty effective. As I mentioned, these vehicles required pilots, which in most cases were battle droids, either OOM series droids or B1 series droids, so simple battle droids. And since these vehicles did have a crew on board, they could be used as command vehicles, and we often see them used to fill this role. Sometimes commanders of entire units would ride an AAT into battle. It's not surprising, it's got a very prominent position for the commander with a hatch on top that allows him to poke his head out and survey the battlefield. But when it's too dangerous, he can keep that hatch closed and look out a series of cameras and sensors, which gave him a pretty good picture of the world around the tank. By the time of the outbreak of the war, these made up a vast majority of the Trade Federation's forces, and when those forces became the Separatist military, a large portion of the Separatist military was now AATs. And that pretty much remained throughout the entirety of the war. In most battles throughout the duration of the war, the AAT is the primary, in some cases only, Separatist vehicle we see. Unlike droid vehicles which seem to fill far more specialized roles, for example the Hellfire which was fast attack against large Republic vehicles, the AAT seemed to be a little bit more well-rounded. Having both light and heavy laser cannons made it capable of attacking both light targets and heavier armored targets. For example, an AAT could make quick work of an ATT in the right circumstances, as well as being effective against smaller, lighter Republic vehicles like ATRT walkers. In a lot of ways, the AAT was a standard tank to which the Republic actually didn't have a great counter. While the Separatists did field a main battle tank, there wasn't anything really on the same level fielded by the Republic. While the ATTE was a large vehicle with a large gun platform on board, the ATTE was significantly slower than the AAT. And that allowed this Separatist main battle tank to be one of the quickest battle tanks on the battlefield, because it was kind of one of the only. Even things like the TX-130 Sabre-class fighter tank, which we see deployed by the Republic, seem to be relatively outgunned compared to the AAT. So, like, well, a Sabre tank, for example, could probably match an AAT's speed, they wouldn't even come close in firepower. Which is why it's not surprising that these found some uses after the end of the war. With the droids shut down, a lot of them, and I mean, like, nearly all of them, went to the scrapyards with the rest of the droid army. However, it's notable that not all of them ended up in scrapyards. In fact, it seems like some of them did find some use after the end of the war. But even if it has a small history after the war, the legacy of the AAT will still be firmly rooted in the Clone Wars and the Confederacy. After all, on a lot of worlds, these tanks would have been a very visual representation of Separatist occupation and oppression. But they wouldn't have been the only vehicle the Separatists used to suppress their subjects. If you want to learn about some of the droid vehicles that were just big battle droids, I'll leave a link up here to my video on droid ground vehicles. 
And I want you to let me know down in the comments whether you think the AAT is a good option or whether they should have opted for something that actually is just a larger droid. And if you have anything from Star Wars you'd like to see me cover, leave it down below in the comments. And last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.